Boy, this comes as FEMA is taking charge of the federal response to the coronavirus. Only on CBS This Morning, FEMA Administrator, that's Peter Gaynor, joins us to discuss. Good morning to you, Mr. Gaynor. President Good morning, Trump, Gail. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. We're all worried about everybody else. President Trump says he's now fully engaged at the highest level, that FEMA is fully engaged. So what specifically, what specifically rather, is FEMA doing to help? Uh, yesterday, uh, we began to take over for uh, full operations, coordinating the entire federal effort uh, here in the National Response Coordination Center. Uh, we combined uh, Secretary Azar's uh, operation center, the, the SOC, uh, here yesterday. So uh, all of government is under one roof. Uh, we're social distancing, and uh, we're throughout the entire building. We're teleworking to make sure that we can uh, do this uh, or respond to this virus in, in the long haul because it's going to be a long battle. So what's your, what's your top priority? And what's March 26th, President Trump approves federal emergency aid for the state of Illinois. James Joseph, FEMA's Regional 5 Administrator, moves into action. He says there's a federal plan for every disaster imaginable, including a deadly pandemic. We're using the playbook and we're actually uh, writing some new, uh, some new policies along the way. At McCormick... Getting more people vaccinated, then we need more vaccination sites. That's where we're going to harness the full resources of the federal government to establish thousands of community vaccination centers. On my first day in office, I'll instruct the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, to begin setting up the first of these centers. By the end of our first month in office, we will have 100 federally supported centers across the nation that will ultimately vaccinate millions of people. President-elect Biden selects New York City's head of emergency management to lead FEMA. Deanne Criswell is the first woman nominated to lead the agency, which is primarily responsible for responding to natural disasters. As head of the city's office of emergency management, Criswell has helped to direct the city's pandemic response, as well as manage its response to tropical storms, snowstorms, and power outages. And From the, the perspective of Secretary Austin, within just his first day, establishing this as his number one priority and firmly stating that this department stands ready to do anything it can to support the president's effort, FEMA's effort, all the while not sacrificing our posture and our capabilities to defend this nation that is where we stand. The Federal right Emergency now. Management Agency announced today it will now lead the national effort to get people vaccinated. Local 12's James Pilcher joining us now live from the Branky News Center with what that means for all of us locally. James, good evening. Thanks, Kyle. Actually, reports started leaking out that FEMA might be getting involved all weekend. And today, the agency made it official with this press release. The agency FEMA is known more for responding to natural disasters such as earthquakes and hurricanes, but it will now lead the effort to vaccinate as many Americans as possible. It's using nearly $58 billion in emergency funding that to make a this. A type happen. one incident management team from the Federal Emergency Management Agency has been assigned to the region to help with setting up mass vaccination sites for Clark, Cowlitz, and Skamania counties. Now, these would be in addition to a planned mass vaccination clinic at the Clark County Fairgrounds announced by the State Department of Health earlier this Voters week. also direct FEMA to stand up vaccination centers at gyms and churches to reimburse states for National Guard personnel and equipment and to accelerate manufacturing of those critical supplies and medicines they say are needed to end the pandemic. Today, President Biden is asking government agencies to take immediate inventory and jump to the front of private sector assembly lines using the Defense Production Act enacted at the beginning of the Korean War. Beginning at 2.18 Eastern uh, Daylight Time, 
uh, we will initiate the test message that goes to cellular phones. Um, that will cause phones to uh, ring, very similar to if you have ever see, received a flash flood or an amber alert that also came through the same system, that's the wireless emergency alert system. So the, the phones will, uh, they buzz very loudly. Uh, they sound very similar. The sound that comes out is very similar to what you're used to hearing on the emergency alert system uh, at the beginning of alerts that are broadcast on radio and television. Um, the message, the text of the message will display right on the, on the uh, home screen or on the, the middle of the screen of the cell phone. Um, at the top of that, there will be a banner that will say presidential alert. That's the category of the type of alert that we're allowed to send nationwide. And then the text of message will say test. This is only a test of the national a wireless emergency alert system and no action is, is needed. Uh, there was concern that Americans weren't necessarily watching radio and TV, uh, especially in the evenings maybe. Uh, the new technology of the cellular phones was just coming online and was suggested uh, that we figure out a way to be also, also be able to send alerts to cellular phones and all other devices as they come online. Uh, in 2006, there were two significant actions. One was uh, an executive order that instructed the uh, Department of Homeland Security to implement a system to be able to warn Americans about all, uh, all hazards um, and uh, across all pieces to use all available avenues. There was also the uh, WARN Act of 2006, which actually instructed our Federal Communications Commission to figure out a way for the mobile wireless carriers to participate in delivering those alerts. Uh, the presidential category is reserved for uh, alerts by the national system. Today, FEMA is the only person that has access. Uh, we're the only people that have access to be able to send a presidential alert, which can be issued for the entire, uh, uh, entire United States, so the entire geography of the United States to include the territories. Um, that that uh, piece had never been tested. This is the backside of the Supreme Court, uh, Maryland Avenue, Second Street, Northeast, and we are approaching the Russell Senate building area. Hey, do you know why they moved you guys outside the fence? No idea. This just happened, huh? No idea why they moved you outside of the fence? That's interesting. So now, if you look guys, we have soldiers lined up.